YouTube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name is Roger. I own a company called QBO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. Today, we are going to be reviewing what I think is the ultimate 2011 concealed carry setup. I'm talking about the Bull Armory SAS-2 Viper. As always, I like to tell you all how I go about getting these guns in for review. I was first introduced to Bull Armory by my good friend Talon Sai. About a year ago, Talon and I were talking and he told me about this awesome 2011 that he had coming in for a review. Uh, knowing that I'm a 1911-2011 guy, he definitely piqued my interest. Uh, he then debuted his review on the SAS-2 Viper on his channel and talked about how this was the first gun in a while that he was really excited to shoot and get out on the range with. Flash forward to SHOT Show 2020 when Talon introduces me to the guys over at Bull Armory. I kept in touch with them throughout this year in regards to holster questions and reviewing one of their guns. I then started to get a lot of requests for holsters for their Compact 2011 from our customer base. So I decided to purchase one for myself. The nice folks over at Bull Armory did give me a nice industry discount, which we greatly appreciate as producing these videos does cost money, especially with the cost of ammo as of recent. So every little bit helps. I placed my order for an SAS-2 Viper and started my 90 day lead time. Well, that lead time is over and the gun is here and I'm happy to say that I am pleasantly surprised with its performance while out on the range. But before I get ahead of myself, let's start with the specs. The Bull Armory SAS Viper 2 is a compact 2011 chambered in either 9mm or 45 ACP with an aluminum frame and full length Picatinny rail. It has a 3.25 inch fluted ramped bull barrel with a one port compensator. Also included is an extended thumb safety, a lightweight CNC machine hammer, two 15 round magazines, a four pound trigger, and it comes in at a very low weight of only 1.42 pounds. The SAS 2 Viper also comes with the Shield RMSC red dot sight and a fiber optic front sight which I've kind of switched out to the new Holosun 507K, but more on that later. Okay, with the specs now out of the way, let's get on to the range footage. All right guys, so I have the SAS-2 Viper loaded up here with some Winchester Ranger 147 grain hollow points. Uh, this is what I'm gonna be carrying. This is what my uh, local gun store had, so I was able to pick a thousand rounds up that, so that's gonna be the carry ammo for the next year. Anyway, I'm gonna get a quick zero with it, and then we'll get this range session going. When I went to film this review, Talon was actually visiting us here in Vegas. So I figured what better way to review this gun than to have the original person who introduced me to the platform shoot it with us on the range. So Talon, Eric, and I headed out to our shooting spot in the desert and we got to Plinkin. Similar to our other videos, we ran a variety of drills, including a modified El Presidente, shooting on the move, and of course some build drills. We ran these drills from concealment using our wingman appendix rig, which we make and sell on our website. This one happened to be wrapped in our new comic book cotton fabric overlay with yellow kydex to make it pop. So with Talon being the guest, he shot first, and here's that footage. All right, Talon, you've been traveling the country. When's the last time you've had a uh, chance to run your compact 2011 SAS 2 Viper? I feel like I haven't shot it in about a year. I honestly don't remember, but it's definitely one of my most fun guns to shoot. If I ever get the chance to go out and shoot for fun, this is definitely one that I'm bringing with me. Cool. So this is like your uh, second first mag impression. Second first mag impression. I don't really remember what I said about it before, but I know I love the gun for sure. I shot it really well right from the start, but recently I've been doing just like normal training stuff. I'm only really shooting Glocks right now, so it'll be weird to get used to the... 2011 grip angle again, but it is what it is. Cool, let's see it. Let's do it. Still like it. <laughs> <laughs> Think sweet. All right, let's go look at them hits. Pretty good shot group, dude. Yeah, it's shooting quick. First, uh, second mag impression, technically, but. Well, yeah. I remember the things you said. It was one of the guns that 
in a long time has got you excited to go to the range for sure yeah i mean i i was telling everyone about it after i got it i was like dude i was really impressed with this gun so well got me to go buy it cool <laughs> are you ready yep stand by Total time, 897. Let's go look at the hits. Let's see, we got two Alpha, two Charlie. Three Alpha, two Charlie, breaking the line. And then two Alpha, two Charlie for a total of 897. From concealment. It's not bad. So I'm sure most of you are already subscribed to Talon's channel here on YouTube and you know that he has been on the road for the last several months in the sat van, but I do have to say that he did really well on the range for not having shot in a while. Next up was my turn with the SAS2 Viper and like I said earlier, I was pleasantly surprised. Total time, 686, first shot, 1.54. Put in a hit. We got a Charlie neckline shot, two alpha, one Charlie. So two Charlie, two alpha. Broke the line. We got three alpha, one Charlie. And then a Delta Charlie, Charlie Alpha. One Delta, two Charlie, one alpha. Total time, six eight six. Yeah, I dig it. All right guys, so you know being a 2011, I'm gonna have to run a build drill on this two thirds uh, eight app mini steel from TA Target. So let's go up to seven yards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool, let's see what we get for time. Make sure we're good here. All right, and stand by. Time 254. First shot was a 161. Little hiccup on the draw. Uh, splits though 2, 2, 18, 18, 17. But yeah, all good hits on that tiny little guy. Let's run a couple more. <laughs> 116. See if we can move a little quicker. <sighs> and it was a 9 6. As you can see from the different drills we did, this thing is definitely a flat shooter. I was really surprised as the gun weighs less than a pound and a half and the felt recoil is so minimal. That large single port compensator really does do the trick. I made sure to run 115, 124, and 147 grade nine millimeter through the gun, including Winchester Ranger hollow points that I use for carry, and there were no issues whatsoever. We even did the slow motion comparison for you guys as that was well received in our last video. Now you may have noticed a light hanging on there on that Picatinny rail section. This is the TLR7A from Streamlight. I have really started to like this weapon light as the new controls are extremely easy to use with a thumbs forward grip. I think that it pairs nicely with this compact setup and provides plenty of light with the 500 lumen output. I feel that the footprint is minimal and I don't feel any difference with or without the light when carrying concealed in regards to comfort or printing. Now, I can tell you that after a few more rain sessions, I'll definitely be carrying this in my EDC rotation as I now have a compact 2011 platform specifically designed for concealed carry. I am overall extremely happy with the SAS2 Viper's performance. We did not experience a single malfunction in the 800 rounds we shot while filming this review. I'm definitely looking forward to more training days with this setup.
Okay, as you can see, there are a lot of great things about the SAS2 Viper. However, there are a few things that I wish were different. The first being the red dot choice. Currently, you cannot purchase this gun without the RMSC from Shield. I'm not a fan of that specific red dot as I've experienced a lot of issues when running it in the past. This leads into my next issue, which is their mounting plate. The plate is designed for the RMSC, which I understand since the gun comes with that optic. However, I needed it to work with the Hollow 7507K. After I purchased some longer screws on Amazon and did a little bit of modification to the plate, I was able to make it work. I hope that in the future, Bull Armory considers offering the SAS2 Viper without the RMSC at a lower price point so we can get that $1,875 price to down to maybe like $1,500 or $1,600 mark. Um, additionally, I hope that they offer different adapter plates that would allow other red dots with the same footprint to work with the gun. You all know that I'm a fan of ambidextrous platforms, so I'll definitely be needing to change out that safety as the SAS2 Viper only comes with one design for a right-handed shooter. This is pretty much why Eric didn't get a lot of trigger time as the gun is very difficult to operate as a lefty when the safety is engaged. The next thing I wanna mention is the grip size. Um, I chose the 15 round grip as it was more compact. For my hand size though, it just happens to hit my palm right in an uncomfortable spot. Um, this could be solved by getting the longer 19 round grip length, which is the one that Talon reviewed. Um, I kind of wish that I would just done that originally as I tend to favor the 19X style OZ9 CX grip, you know, the shorter slide, longer length grip, um, or by finding a magwell that is compatible with the gun to serve as kind of like a palm stop. Um, however, I have not been able to do so when searching online for a magwell. So hopefully Bull Armory comes out with one that we can all purchase. Um, also something to note, the grips are not interchangeable as they are hand fitted to the trigger frame and slide. So for me to run the 19 round grip size, I'd have to purchase a whole nother SAS2 Viper. But if you ask me, that's as good as reason as any to get another 2011. So maybe I'll order another one. Uh, but this time I'm thinking I'll go with the titanium nitride trigger and barrel for some awesome contrasting colors. The last thing you'll want to know about are additional magazines. The gun only comes with two and they're proprietary to the platform. You also cannot order additional magazines currently, which is a bummer. Um, I hope this too is something that is addressed in the near future by Bull. As always guys, understand that these are my preferences and these are the things that I would want to see done with the platform. Um, I have friends that love and swear by the Shield RMSC site and they run it daily. Uh, I also have friends that prefer to not have an ambidextrous safety. Um, as they say, it allows more clearance for their trigger finger on the right side. Um, other than that guys, you'll definitely be seeing this in my EDC rotation and in future range videos um, as it's for sure a, a awesome fun gun to shoot. Well, everyone, that's going to do it for our review of the Bull Armory SAS2 Viper. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up down below as that does help out the channel. Um, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing because we post new videos every week. If you want to support our content, please check out our Patreon link down below. Patreon members get first access to new content, new gear, special discounts, and giveaways. They are a huge reason why we can continue to create the content for you all to check out. Thanks again, guys, for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Shoot ready? Stand by. Dur -dur -dur. Mm. All right. It's dumb. <laughs> Shoot ready? Yep. Stand by. <laughs> Shoot ready. <laughs> Come here. in t-shirt Mother about a year ago Talon and I were talking mm, that up Bernie <clears throat> I was about to go off script and you just bet. thinking about it <laughs> me up ah, mother yeah we got Talon on the bloopers <laughs> <laughs>